Message to the Black Man in America by Elijah Muhammad, Part 14. The unity of 22 million so-called Negroes up from slavery is the answer to our salvation. We are suffering untold torture and murder at the hands of our enemies because of the lack of unity. The cause of this lack of unity among us is due to the work and teaching of our enemies, the slave master's children. Our slave master's children have reared our fathers and mothers to be the enemies of each other. They have destroyed our love for self and kind. They have educated us to hate and refuse all that goes for black people. The lack of love for self and kind keeps us divided and being divided, we are a nation of prey at the hands of our open enemies. Whatever the amount of education we receive from our enemies, we are still the slave of our enemies due to this lack of knowledge of self, God and the devil, the true religion of self, self pride, self interest and self independence and the desire of a country and of a government of our own under the law and justice and righteousness for every one of our poor black people throughout the earth. But let us start first in America where we are the victims of no freedom, justice and equality and we know the pains of being divided. At present, we have hundreds of clubs and organizations, thousands of teachers, hundreds of educators, scholars, scientists, technicians, doctors, lawyers, judges, congressmen, ambassadors, professors, tradesmen of all kinds, and engineers of most every kind. We have all kinds of religious believers, teachers, preachers by the thousands agriculturists, herdsmen and cattlemen and fishermen and hundreds of hunters of wild game. What more do we need but unity of the whole for the whole? What actually is preventing this 22 million or more of us is in the ignorance and foolish love and fear of our enemies in the professional and leadership class of this nation of 22 million black people up from slavery. These are disgraceful Uncle Toms in a world of freedom, learning and advanced science in every branch of study. How long shall we seek the white man's education to become their servants instead of becoming builders of a progressive nation of our own on some of this earth that we can call our own? Why are you so foolish to think it cannot be done? I have Allah God and the world of the righteous on my side to accomplish this. There is no hope for us in Christianity. It is a religion organized by the enemies of the black nation to enslave us to the white race rule. But our unity under the crescent with Allah's guidance can get us anything we desire in the way of help and some of this earth that we can call our own. By the help of Allah, I have and I will still prove to you that Allah God has given me the only solution to our problem here under this race of merciless devils. If you can prove to me that you have a better solution for the future of our nation, I will bring my followers and myself and join you. And if the solution given to me from Almighty God Allah is best, come you and your followers and join with me. So you say that we cannot unite and produce our own necessities. We are 22 million or more people dependent on the white American citizens to produce food, clothing, shelter, transportation, employment, and educational training. And if they, the white Americans, do not share equally with us, we charge them with discriminating. Some of us will go to the extreme of disgracing ourselves and trying to force white American citizens to give equal respect. The love of self and self-respect, along with the will to do something for self, if given a chance, will get you the respect of all civilized nations. It is a shame and a disgrace to the intelligence of any people to lie at the feet and doorsteps of another nation, asking, praying to be cared for. Love and unity of self and kind is the key to our salvation. If you say that we cannot unite, you are wrong. We can't unite. Before your very eyes, you see the believers in Allah God 
and his religion, Islam uniting and this divine power from Allah working among us, uniting us into a nation of brotherly love. This proves the lie of that old saying that the Negroes cannot unite. I agree with you who are in the Christian churches, lovers and followers of white Christians that you cannot enjoy the love and unity among yourselves. The basic aim and purpose of religion, Christianity, was to deceive other races, namely the black, brown, yellow, and red, to make an easy prey for the white race. But today, you and I both see the powerless forces of Christianity unable to bring about peace among those who profess it. Since Christian, Europe, and America cannot bring peace to their troubled world with all their satellite nations as helpers, what kind of peace can they make for us? Their religion divides one another. This I am sure we can all agree upon. We must know self to gain self-respect. This will remove that old slave idea that the so-called Negroes cannot unite and build an independent nation on some of this good earth that we can call our own. Stop looking for others to help you and that which you can do for yourself. The white man has made the black man lazy that he may rule and enslave him by producing and selling to him that which he can produce for himself. But the white man knows that he has destroyed the black man's unity. And as long as the black man thinks he cannot love and unite with black, the white man knows that he has a permanent slave. Come and let us unite under the crescent and do something for ourselves in the way of supporting our own needs. Go after some of this earth for our nation of 22 million here in North America. If it cannot be here, there is plenty of earth elsewhere. We want nothing short of a home on this earth that we can call our own, not to be servants and slave for other free nations. Let us capture the market of our people by producing their needs. We cannot produce our needs on the soil of another. What we must understand today is the importance of acquiring land of our own. We are no longer a mere handful of people. We are a little better than 22 million in population and still increasing. We cannot forever continue to depend on America to give us jobs, send us to school, build our houses and sell us her food and give nothing in return. America was established and characterized with constitutional guarantees for the black man before the white man. America was not founded to guarantee the freedom and equality of the black man and woman. And indeed, she is not seeking to grant these privileges to our people today. In what other country on this earth will you find 22 million people with the framework of another people's government seeking to become qualified citizen joyously singing the song of integration our people are the fools of the nations integration means self-destruction and means to this end is exactly that death is nothing less the black people throughout the earth are seeking independence for their own not integration into white society what do we look like trying to integrate with our 400 year old enemies the average so-called negro wants to change his own flesh color and blood for a strange blood and flesh in order to build a nation you must first have some land from our first generation of slaves to the present generation of our people we have been unable to unite and acquire some land of our own due to the mental poisoning of our former slave masters who destroyed us in the desire to think and do for self and kind. Do you as educated and professional men and women desire to be recognized forever as the mental slaves, beggars of white America? Today, the international conception of honor, pride and dignity is concerned with individuals within a country, but is rather concerned with your work and value as a part of an established nation. 
In order to be recognized today, you must represent yourself as a nation. We must understand the importance of land to our nation. The first and most important reason that the individual countries of Europe, Africa, and Asia are recognized as nations is because they occupy a specific area of the earth. Secondly, they are recognized because of the effectiveness of their internal unity and policies and then by their enactment of international policies and agreement with other established nations. The black man has been actually worthless when it comes to exercising the rights as human beings in an ever advancing civilization. So remember, we cannot demand recognition until we have some land that we can call our own. You might argue that this is impossible, but I say to you with the help of Almighty God Allah on my side, this is not only possible, but it is in the working for our people and will manifest itself soon. We cannot be successful in the house of our enemies. We should be in our own house. That which is other than our own is for those who are other than our own. Our own is unlimited physically and spiritually. There are those who think that our lack of freedom, justice, and equality can be solved in the white man's crooked and corrupt policies. But these so-called leaders who think that this political strategy will solve our problem are as far as wrong as the distance from the east to the west. I have said many times that the solution to our problem is divine. There are so many who would, just for self-praise or exaltation, like to lead you astray under the false claim that they can solve the problem by ways other than divine. You should never listen to these leaders because they will lead you into the fisherman's net. Such leaders show no respect for Allah and his power to solve our problems of freeing us from our enemies and raising us into a state of independence like other independent nations. Independence to you is strange. You have given up the hope of ever being independent, but this is just what Allah God wants to do for you. Don't you think it is time after 400 years as servants to strangers? It is hopeless to think that these strangers will ever be other than what they are now to you. Please do not think that they can be conquered by bricks, bats, shotgun, a few arms, or homemade bombs. It takes the forces of nature and the confusion of minds and thoughts which are controlled by the power of Allah. Be wise and submit to Allah who has the power to defend you and destroy your enemies who are too powerful for you. Much is being done in attempting to stop Elijah Muhammad's deliverance of Allah's message of life and salvation to his people here in America who have been used as merchandise, cattle, and animals. The hypocrites and devils are now united against me and my followers and wish to make a concerted attack on us with many false charges as well as planning actual death for us. But Allah too has planned. I say to my followers, fear not. If you are with me, Allah is with you. And the more they attack us, the more Allah is attacking and will attack them. The truth of Allah will be universally and permanently established. I have Allah on my side, while the hypocrites have the devils, and they cannot defend the followers on their side who are against Allah. I know that the enemies and hypocrites were going to do this long ago because Allah had told me of them and the evil, deceitful plans that they will try to carry out. He will bring them to nothing before your very eyes. As you see, their efforts in trying to oppose me are being counteracted by Allah with the conversion of more people everywhere. The hypocrites will never find true friends and will never enjoy the light and guidance of Allah. They are confused and cannot claim Allah because they have not believed in him by forsaking his messenger. May he, Allah, give the chastisement that he promised them in his holy Quran and give those who believe in him and his truth the joy of fearlessness, lack of grief and peace of mind and contentment. Do we have qualified men and women for self-government? 
The answer to this question is yes. We do not have to be equal in knowledge with every nation to be successful in operating our own government. Were those whites who first came to this country seeking self-government equal with England's parliamentary lords? There are probably many independent people who do not have among them many who have the know-how of the American educated class of so-called Negroes. We have enough technicians such as mathematicians, construction engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, physicists, chemists, educators, agriculturists, navigators, and aeronauts. Among the 22 million or more of us, you will find scholars or scientists whom we can use in every branch of government. Then there are our own independent people outside of this country who would be glad to help us get going in a country or state for ourselves. We do not expect to build, nor do we desire to build a government pattern after the order of the white race. Naturally, we would need help for the next 20 to 25 years. After that, we would be self-supporting. The spirit of doing for self is now fast coming into our people. They only need a new education of self and others. Unity under the crescent of Islam is all that is necessary for you and me to become the world's greatest people. The lying and slavery teachings of the white man's Christianity that has crucified our people all over the earth must be given up. We must accept the true religion, Islam, of Jesus and the prophets before and after him before we can be successful in doing anything. The unwillingness of the slaves to leave their masters is due to their great love for their slave masters. If America is unwilling to grant her 22 million ex-slaves freedom to go for self today, it is the same unwillingness of white America's forefathers in dealing with our parents less than 100 years ago. During the time of the Emancipation Proclamation, we were scattered to the winds without any knowledge or ability to undertake the responsibilities of a half freedom. Our fathers, lacking the skills and the training needed to provide for themselves, were forced to remain with the masters in order to receive even the barest necessities of life. Our former slave masters, knowing of our dependence upon them, maliciously and hatefully adopted attitudes and social and educational systems that have deprived us of the opportunity to become free and independent right up to the present day. But we, the black slaves of this soil of bondage, were not deprived from the freedom to fight in America wars but we are deprived of the right to fight for our own freedom. The opposition met by our four parents who fought for their freedom is a chilled memory that history will not forget. The black people are given the freedom to give their lives for the American cause of tyranny, but are not free to fight for their own freedom and independence. As long as my people are the blind lovers of their enemies, they will seek to forever return to the bosom of their masters in no better status or position than that of a slave. Our foreparents' desire was to see us free indeed, and not only are some of our people willing to betray those of our blood and kindred who died before us, but they are now willing to betray the fruition of freedom of our generations to come. Allah will help us to get this freedom, justice, and equality and some of this earth that we can call our own. I say to the American white citizens who are in a position to oppose us to hasten the separation of the two or suffer the consequences as did the Egyptians opposing Jehovah and his servant Moses. We must have some of this earth that we can call our own. We and our fathers have been robbed of all of that we originally possessed and now we are left without anything to use for itself like wealth and modern instruments to start a civilization as you have, though we have helped you to get what you have. We now must have justice and some of this earth, and it is wealth that we can call our own.
Let the foolish educators and teachers think not that we have a future in white America's promises, where they themselves do not have a future unless they are willing to divide this country between our people and the Indians whom they robbed nearly 500 years ago. However, we must have some of this earth that we can call our own and soon. We also, the Indians, deserve justice in this matter. We can no longer think in the slavery time terms as we used to think. The preachers need and must be taught the true religion of God and stop enslaving our people into that lying and slavery teaching of the devils. Believe it or not, we have been serving and worshiping the real devils. Stop preaching that old lie that God loves all human beings. He most certainly does not love the devils. He set a day for their doom, the day that they were grafted and given 6,000 years to rule us, rule of lying and murdering us day and night and deceiving nearly the entire nation of the black, brown, yellow, and red people. I possess a letter that is supposed to be the authentic on how the devils, the beasts, they have murdered and killed a hundred million black Africans since they have contacted them with their lying Christianity. Do we not love our black brother's blood regardless of where spilled? In 1898, a devil by the name of Le Croce, representing Belgium's big business, admitted that he had murdered 160 so-called Negro men, women, and children. He also admitted he had tortured some and crucified women and children. The Congo. In 1880, Belgium estimated a population of 30 million. By 1911, the population was reduced to 8.5 million. In 1894, an English traveler, E.J. Glade, reported 21 heads of black men were brought to Stanley Falls and used as a decoration around a flower bed in some of the homes of a high-ranking army officer. Missionaries reported that the white Christians forced the so-called Negro into slavery producing rubber, and if the rubber was bad quality, the poor black slaves were made to eat it. And you are fools enough to preach their deadly poison religion Christianity to the suffering of self and kind. Are you in love with your open enemies and the murderers of all black people? God and his prophets? Then stick around and see where you will end up. The poor slave, after his masters let him go free, his first problem was to solve securing a home of his own for the first time. He must now do for self. Master is no longer responsible for him. He must solve his own problems. He must now realize that he must work hard to be equal of other nations. He must also remember that justice and righteousness is his defense and wickedness is his enemy and is the downfall of his government and his people. He must learn to make friends and to protect himself against enemies. He must dig into the earth for her richest treasures. He must now seek the friendship of other nations to do businesses with him and trade product for product. But if the slave is lazy, he will always be a slave for another. No nation respects a beggar. We, the members of the original black nation of the earth, who were once lost from our own kind, are supposed to be free. It absolutely does not make sense for us to be seeking integration with our slave master's children instead of seeking unity among our own kind. There is not any earth offered to us in integrating. How can we and our children build an independent nation of this earth without some of it that we can call our own? Do we not look ignorant, begging white America to accept us as equal members of their society without having one square foot of earth that we can call our own? We are like hunter dogs whom the hunter is tired and wishes that they will go and hunt food for themselves but the poor foolish dog is there whenever his master sits down to eat standing in the door begging with his tongue hanging out and wagging his tail while at the same time had he gone into the woods looking for a meal 
he would not have had to suffer the hatred, kicks, and curses of his master. Without some of this earth for a home that we can call our own, rest assured, we will forever be 22 million begging slaves at the door of some nation. We, the black people of America, should be ashamed of ourselves to go and sit in the white businesses to force them to serve us. Let us unite and serve ourselves. If the spiritual leaders could understand the Bible's prophecy, they will see how foolish they are in doing the things that they are doing. We should seek a permanent home for our nation, not by begging others for what is theirs, and stop acting foolish and unite. Do for self before you will have to do it. The white race days are drawing to a close. Their rule over the darker nations must end. According to Allah God and his prophets, the wicked world must give a way for a world of righteousness. From a fruit comes a great nation. The Lord of God, Islam, taught me that in 1555, a devil by the name of John Hawkins or Hopkins of England brought the first of our parents here for the purposes of slaves. We were not to be citizens, not to be represented as humans, or to be given equal justice under the American laws. In 300 years of slavery, we were lashed, beaten, and killed, given no education, and reared and cared for like the slave master's stock, horses, cows, and other domestic animals. Our children were separated to different plantation owners. For the last approximately 100 years of so-called freedom, the so-called Negroes have been subjected to the worst inhuman treatment of any people who have ever lived on the earth. They, the devils, have lynched and burned the so-called Negroes during the past century as sport for their wives and children to enjoy. Edwin R. Embry states in his book, Brown Americans, page 169, that the burning of Henry Lowry in Arkansas, preceded by inches, leaves soaked in gasoline, were heaped about in small bundles so that torture would be dragged out. Ralph Rudy, a reporter, described the entire orgy in the Memphis Press of January 27, 1921. He was able to cover the story because of the plans for the lynching had been made well in advance. The newspapers were notified to be ready to issue extras. Henry Smith was burned at the stake in Texas. Excursion trains were run for the event. Many women and children were in the throng that gloated over the suffering of the victim. This is something the teachers and leaders of the so-called Negroes should teach their children the evil and murder of their people by these blue-eyed devils. Instead, because of their fear of the white blue-eyed devils, the so-called Negro parents teach their children just the opposite. Their doctrine is love your enemies and do not hate those who mistreat you. That is, if it is a white person, but if he is a Negro, kill or beat the hell out of him. The so-called Negro leaders know that the white devils do not care about a Negro killing another Negro. How can we help our younger people of the present day from loving their open enemies, the devils. The Lord, God of righteousness, dislike any one of us who love these white blue eyed devils. He threatens to send every one of us to hell with the devils who will show love for them, love to be called by the devil's name or worship their images. Read your Bible and your Quran. Edwin Embry, also on the same page, mentions what Walter White deceased secretary of NAACP said he heard and saw in Florida. In his book, Rope and Faggot, White recounts the gruesome tale of lynching in this country while investigating an atrocious riot in Florida. White was met, he says, by three clean, healthy children headed for school. None were over the age of nine. They gleefully described the event and the fun we had burning the niggers. Do thank Allah for revealing this evil, deceitful, open enemy, the devil. The devil has deceived most of the worlds of black people. 
They have nearly nine tenths of the black people headed to their doom with them. Curse be to the black man or woman who loves this open enemy, the devil, and hates his own black skin and kind. May the chastisement of Allah choke you until you submit that. There is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is in the wilderness of North America in his messenger. After all of the evil that we have suffered at the very hands of these devils, we have become a nation in a nation. We must now be separated from them and given a place on this earth that we can call our own. They, the white race, cannot treat you and me with justice and equality. They cannot do so among themselves, even though they are against us. This does not mean that they have love and peace for each other. No, they war against each other all the time. They are devils. No heart of love and mercy are in them, as you may think. Nature did not give them such a heart. The Bible warns us against the love and worship of these devils. In the book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 37, says, Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. In another place it states that you should have fellowship with the devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devil. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of the devils. That's in the first book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 21. They should not worship up devils. Revelations chapter 9 verse 20. The so-called Negroes because of their fear and ignorance of this real open enemy, the devil, will fall victim to them if we do not constantly warn them of their consequences. I am willing to die for the so-called Negro and that they may see and understand the truth of self, God, and this race of devils. We have served them well through ignorance and blindness because of being without a teacher. Allah God has given you one. I, Elijah Muhammad, am from God himself. Why not believe and follow me? Are you afraid of being persecuted for the sake of truth to this 22 million blind, deaf, and dumb, lost foundation of Islam? In that case, your life is already doomed.